okay and this is a recording uh, on the exotic option that's part of frm2 part to uh, uh, market risk part so we'll uh, define and discuss the important characteristic of various exotic options uh, the difference between exotic options and more traditionally exchange traded instrument is something that you need to be familiar with because uh, uh, the payoff of these uh, exotic options would uh, be quite interesting to look at so plain vanilla derivative uh, include listed future contracts and commonly uh, used forwards and over the counter derivatives that are traded in fairly liquid market exotic derivatives are customized to fit a specific firm needed for hedging that cannot be met by plain vanilla derivatives with plain vanilla derivatives there is little uncertainty about the cost the current value when they will pay how much they will pay cost of exiting the position with exotic derivatives uh, we'll we'll look at uh, and uh, these are the problems that again crop in so why were these derivative developed so uh, every firm has got uh, its own issues and problems so they provide a unique uh, hedge for firms underlying asset so there could be tax and regulatory concern as well as speculation or uh, any expectation of uh, future uh, market prices might move in a particular direction that that might create uh, some trouble for the firm so four questions should be addressed when evaluating exotic uh, derivative strategies the first question is that will the strategy pay in the right circumstances to provide an effective hedge problem with understanding the payoff of the exotic derivative and credit risk of the derivative strategy can lead to a difference between payoff expected by the user and the actual payoff received what is the cost of uh, exotic derivative hedging strategy the third question is is the pricing model needed does the user have appropriate pricing model to estimate dealer cost and monitor the value of non traded derivative over the time then the fourth question is how is derivative position reversed none of the uh, none that the cost of exiting a position or a strategy may involve penalties or a large beta spread or require a price model to evaluate alternatives so in summary the problem here comes on pricing on the cost because you don't know how much uh, how to model it in the very right way it it it's also a trouble to exit the position because it's also a straight away thing because uh, you you don't get uh, a buyer so beta ask uh, uh, spread would come into play so how uh, a derivative can be converted into a zero cost product a package is defined as a combination of standard european forward cash and relying asset bull bear calendar spread as well as straddle strangle are example of these packages packages usually consist of selling one instrument with certain characteristic and buying another with somewhat different characteristic because packages often consist of long position and a short position they can be constructed so that the initial cost to the investor is zero now in this uh, you know there is a very famous pension hedge where uh, you've got a large uh, pension obligation which can move along with interest rates so you give away some of the profits uh, when a pension rate moves in a particular direction and you buy uh, and you uh, you use that uh, that contract which is a zero cost to you to hedge your risk so most of the time it's about a zero cost option for example consider a zero cost collar and this is again the pension the example that i was talking about a short collar combined a long put option with an exercise price and a short call option with an exercise price if the premium investor pays out for a put option is exactly that uh, it offsets by a premium received for a short call option the investor net cost for implementing collar strategy is zero in case investors cash flow from long position offset by uh, the investor can use a package to use a zero cost product So how can we actually transform uh, American options into non-standard American option? So if we remember from the earlier exam that exchange traded American option can be exercised at any time before to the expiration. If some of the available expiration period are restricted or changes need to be made, standard options become what we refer as non-standard option. Non-standard option are common in the over-the-counter market. There are three common features that transform standard options into a non-transformation. So let's look at three of them. The most common transformation can be made to restrict early exercise to a certain dates. Example: a three-call option may be exercised on the last day of each month. and this type of transformation makes it into a bermuda option and bermuda means uh, uh, a place or a time where uh, you can do that so something like that which you can remember as a hint to remember them early exercise can be limited to a certain portion of a life of an option which means there is a lockout period that does not allow a six month call option to be exercised in the first three months so there could be a lockout period the option strike price may change the strike price of a 3 year call box with a strike price of 40 initially may reach to 44 in 2 years and 48 in 3 years so these are the all uh, 
uh, transformation that you go docker but uh, you can transform uh, the options into a non standard option so you can buy from the market and play around with them and uh, you know uh, interpose one or the other now what we look here is the 11 exotic option and we need to understand very carefully because the effect of uh, different uh, uh, volatilities and uh, interest rate and all these things would come into play so let's look at the first one which is the forward start option a forward start option an option that begins their existence at some time in the future for example today investor may purchase a 3 month call option that will not come into existence until 6 months from today so employee incentives uh, plan commonly incorporate forward start option which are at the money option which will create after some period of uh, employment has passed so uh, note when the underlying asset is non dividend paying back stock the value of formation will be identical to when it open at the money option with the same time to expiration as the forward start option so this is forward start now uh, uh, the pricing would be very same uh, because uh, uh, it does not matter when you exercise it so uh, you can use the normal pricing method so uh, pricing is not an issue here then we look at a compound option now there are four types of compound option a call on a call a call on a put a put on a call a put on a put so a call on a call gives the investor the right to buy a call option at a set price for a set period of time a call on a put gives an investor a right to buy a put option at a certain price for a set of time a put on a call gives an investor to sell a call at a price uh, at a set price and a put on a call gives investor the right to sell a put option at a set price for the future so compound option has two level of underlying that determine the value the value of the underlying option which is turn determine the value of the underlying asset compound option consists of two strike price and two exercise dates first strike price and exercise date are usual used by the holder to evaluate whether to exercise the first option to receive the second option where the second is the option on the underlying asset or just the compound option expire for example a call on a call would be exercised only if the price of the underlying for the second call option were greater than strike price of the initial option a strike price and the exercise price on the second call however are related to the value of the underlying asset then we have the chooser option this is interesting option and after a certain period has elapsed uh, you can choose whether you want to uh, uh, use that option as a put or a call. The option with greater value after requisite time has been determined. The owner will choose the option to be a put or a call. Then we have the barrier option. Barrier option are options whose payoff depend on whether the underlying asset prices reaches a certain barrier level over the life of the option. These options are usually less expensive than standard option and essentially comes in either knockout or knock in favors. So down and out put option. A standard put option uh, that cease to exist if the underlying price hits a barrier level which is set below the current stock price down and out so when it's down it's out so it ceases to exist if the underlying price hits a barrier level which is below the stock price so if it moves uh, down to a particular level it's out down and in it's a call option or a put option uh, that allows to come into action if the underlying price hits a barrier level which is set below so down and in means when it goes it, uh, it it is then effective then up and out option cease to exist if the underlying price hits a barrier level which is set above and up and in which comes into action only when we hit the above price so barrier option have characteristic that can vary differently from those of a non-standard option for example Vega the sensitivity of an option price to a change in volatility is always positive for a standard option but may be negative for a barrier option increase volatility on a down and out option and an up and out option does not increase value because the closer the line get to the very price the greater chances that the option will expire then we have the binary option the binary option generate discontinuous pure profiles because they pay only one price at the expiration if the asset is above a strike price the term binary means that the option pay off one or the two states the option pay a set dollar amount in the future if the option uh, now uh, is above the strike price or the option pays nothing if they are below the strike price hence a payoff discontinuity results in the fact that payoff is of one value it does not increase continuously with the price of the underlying asset as in the case of a traditional option in case of cash on nothing call a fixed queue is paid at when the asset ends above the strike price since black scholes motown model nd2 is the probability of the asset price being above the strike price the value of cash of nothing is q e to the power rt into nd2 now uh, just remember this ND2 which is the probability of the strike price and you just multiply this and you bring that price today now uh, 
ND1 and ND2, uh, if you are not aware of them, you can look at the Black Scholes option button model. Uh, an asset or nothing call pays the value for stock auction when the contract is initiated if the stock price ends up over the stock price at expiration. The corresponding value is S0 into e to the power minus RT into ND1. So that's uh, an asset or a nothing call option. Then we have uh, the look back option. Look back option or options whose payoff depend on a maximum or minimum price of underlying asset during the life of the option. A floating look back option pays the difference between expiration price and the minimum price over the horizon. So just look at it. You are looking back and you are looking at the minimum price and you are playing paying a difference between the expiration and the minimum price. So looking back for the minimum price in the past. Uh, therefore you can understand this as the name of look back. Now this essentially allows the owner to purchase the security at the lowest price over the option's life. On the other hand, floating look back pays the difference between expiration and maximum price. So we have floating look back call and floating look back put. Now this translates into allowing the owner the option to sell the security at its highest price over the span of the option. Look back option can be fixed when the exercise price is specified. A fixed look back call has a payoff that is identical to a European call option. However, for this exotic option, the final price or the expiration price in the call option payoff is replaced by maximum price during the option's life. Similarly, a fixed look back put has a fixed uh, payoff like that of a European put but replaces the final stock price with the minimum price. Then we have the shout option. A shout option allows the user to pick a date when he shouts uh, to the option seller which then translates into intrinsic value of an option at the time of the shout. So at, op at option expiration the owner receives the maximum of shout intrinsic or the optional expiration intrinsic value. In other words for a shout call option if the price of the stock falls after the shout the investor has logged in the difference between the price and the shout and the stock and the shout price. If the stock continues to rise, the soft option will have a payoff consistent with a standard call option. Note that most call options allow for one shout during the life's option. Then we have the Asian option. Asian option have payoff profile based on average price of the security over the life of the option. Average uh, price calls and puts uh, pay off the difference between the average stock price. Now this means that the price for an Asian average option will be lower than the price of a comparable standard option. Average strike price and average uh, uh, strike calls and average stock put pays off a difference between stock expiration price and average price which essentially represents that the strike price is typically intrinsic value calculation. If the average price or strike price for an Asian option is based on geometric average then using option pricing model is not a problem because geometric average is log normal. However, most Asian option based base their average calculation on arithmetic average which complicates the pricing process. In case a log normal distribution of price assume which price is an adequate approximation. Then we have the exchange option. A common use of an option to exchange one asset to another. Often called an exchange option is to exchange one currency with another. For example a US investor might hold an option to purchase euros with yen at a specified exchange rate. This particular In this particular case the option will be exercised if euros are more valuable to US investor than yen. Other application tenders offer to exchange one stock for other and uh, also they could be made for other options. Then we have the basket option. Basket options are simply options to produce or uh, purchase or sell a basket of securities. These baskets may be defined for individual investor or may be composed of specific stock indices or currencies. Any executive option that involves several assets at one are more generally referred as rainbow options. So if they have different assets then they are rainbow otherwise it's a type of a basket option. Then we have variance swap and volatility swap. A volatility swap involves the exchange of volatility based on a notional principle. One side of the swap pays on the price pre-specified uh, fixed volatility while the other pays on a realized volatility. Unlike exotic options we have discussed uh, Thus far, volatility swaps are bet on volatility alone as opposed to bet on volatility and price of the underlying asset. Much more like the volatility swap, a variance swap involves an exchange of predetermined fixed variance for a realized variance rate. The variance rate may be exchanged is simply is the square of the volatility rate. However, unlike volatility swap, variance swap are easier to price and hedge since they can be replicated using collection uh, by collecting call and put options. Now, uh, when we look at implied volatility and look at how they uh, they find out um, the volatilities the market is behaving we calculate that by that by the put and call that's being traded in the market
Now let's look at uh, issues in hedging exotic option. So the, dyna uh, the typical dynamic option hedging situation using option Greeks to measure sensitivity or option to change the underlying asset, like creating a delta neutral portfolio. Uh, hedging is simpler with some exotic option that is plain well in option Asian option for instance depends on average price through time the uncertainty of average gets smaller hence the option begins to become less sensitive to change in the value of security payoff and can be estimated more accurately hedging position in barrier another exotic option is not straightforward this type of hedging requires replication of a portfolio that is exactly opposite to the option price when the replication portfolio requires frequent adjustment to the uh, holding of the underlying asset, the hedging procedure is referred to as dynamic option replication. Dynamic option replication requires frequent trading which makes it costly to implement. As an alternative, static option replication may be used with a hedge position in exotic option. In that case, a short portfolio of actively traded option that approximates the position is constructed. This short replication option portfolio is created once which drastically reduces the transaction cost associated with dynamic rebalancing. So there is dynamic option re replication and static option replication. So uh, restriction, restricting expiry exercise dates and changing strike price can transform standard option into a non-standard option. So uh, 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 depending on the option, we can hedge it into a dynamic or a static concept. I think that would be it for this session. I hope this added something to your current knowledge bank. Thank you for listening.